In this scene, we'll learn to control our volumes with XP modifiers and Cinema 4D deformers. We'll use an XP attractor and XP turbulence to modify the fluid motion. We'll learn how to use a spline and the XP flow field to guide and shape our simulation. We'll then deform and redirect the volume using the bend, twist and spline wrap deformers. Okay, so here we are in Cinema 4D. As you can see, we have a couple of XP system objects. We have a modifiers one and a deformers one. We'll get back to deformers later and we'll start with modifiers. So inside that XP system object, we have an explosion effects object. That's the pink bounds we're seeing in the viewport here. We have a sphere primitive and we have a, an explosion effects source tag. So let's have a look at our resulting simulation. And as I play, you'll see we're adding fuel, we're adding heat, and those are combining and being solved within the explosion effects object to generate some burning and create this smoke. So all of these things are properties within a voxel. So these different channels, this heat, smoke, fuel, they're all simply properties within a voxel. And obviously they're moving, they're being advected based on different calculations and solves within the uh, exposure effects object resulting in this fluid motion. So we have velocities, we have buoyancy obviously, which is pushing our fluid upward uh, based on the temperature, based, based on the heat. Uh, the density of the smoke and all that kind of thing. We also have some uh, vorticity and some turbulence to that vorticity. But the cool thing about exposure effects is we can actually modify that motion. We can actually impart velocities, um, other properties into the voxels and influence our simulation. We can modify our simulation. And of course, because this is X particles, we have a, a bunch of really cool modifiers that can help us with that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one of those now. We're going to add a motion modifier. We're going to add an attractor, XP attractor modifier. Let me move that over to the right here because I want to drag the fluid over to the right. And the first thing you'll notice is that this actually has no impact on our simulation at all. And the reason for that is, is that all modifiers are excluded by default in the exposure effects object. It's just for convenience. If you have other uh, X particles object uh, systems in your scene, it just means that the exposure effects is only using its internal calculations to create the motion. So I'm going to go to the exposure effects object and I'm going to explicitly tell it to look for this modifier and have this modifier add velocity to our simulation. So I add it in here and you'll see immediately our simulation starts to move over towards this attractor. Even the stuff all the way at the top here, we have no fall off. And currently I have it set to velocity. You can see I've got the, it's, it's, giving a, a universal velocity everywhere. If I change this to force, it'll give a bit more of a natural look and it can combine with other modifiers a bit better as well. But you can see I can actually now really control our simulation. I can pull the simulation towards us. Now, of course, it's fighting against the other forces that are on inside the exposure effects object. The buoyancy, of course, and the turbulence in the vorticity. But that is really cool, very art directable. And we could even use negative uh, values to push the simulation away. You can see there, I could even try and counteract the buoyancy if I put it above, it increase that negative strength and it's pushing the fluid right back down again. Okay, so that's excellent. That's a, that's a very simple modifier though. It's just gonna pull it all, all of the velocity is gonna pull towards or, or push away from this attractor. Let's try one that's a bit more universal. Let's go for a classic turbulence xp turbulence modifier and of course we can increase the strength i'm going to drop the scale now again we need to associate it with our exposure effects object we need to tell the exposure effects object to accept the velocities from this modifier so add it in here like so and you'll see it's churning up our simulation quite a lot there there we go and if i make it too strong obviously it, it would uh become very erratic like so and it diffuses the simulation very quickly there we go but we are getting a really nice looking flame at the bottom here so this is quite a good one to use with flames okay so those are two simple pretty simple modifiers one modifier that is actually a dynamic modifier and is excellent to use with exposure effects is the xp flow field and we can add one from this dynamics null drop it in like so and you'll see at default, the field is set to random and the field mode is set to direction. 
Now that's important and I'll explain in a second. If we go to the exposure effects object and we're going to connect it up just as we have with the other modifiers, drag the flow field in and you'll see we have the flow field in here. Now whilst we're here, let's just take a look at the, the options we have in this include exclude list. If I turn that off, it's going to exclude and if I turn it on, it's going to include and have an impact. Just like you would with an X, uh, XP emitter object and we're including different modifiers. If we have a few in here, you can test them on their own. You can turn the other ones off and so on. Similarly, we have the same system checkbox. If I drag our XP flow field outside and we have same system active in this modifiers tab, it won't affect until I drag it in. And there you go. You can see it's disrupting. Now our fluid is just moving through a static field of, of random uh, vectors here. That's what the random field does. And if I go back to frame zero, I want to add a more complicated flow here, a, a different field. I'm going to use a spline mode. So I need a spline to input and let's draw that. So let's hit F4, go into our front view and let's draw a spline that our fluid can flow along. Now I'm going to have it come out the side here. I'm going to make it go off to the side. Try and have it flow down that way, maybe a bit more space between them, like so. And there we go. We can have it go out the top of our of our container, like up there. Okay, so let's jump back to our perspective viewport, F1. And we're going to need to connect this spline up to a spline field or spline layer. And we're going to grab the along spline to start with. I'm going to drag the spline in, and you'll see the resulting um, velocity trails and they are moving along our spline and we can actually change the resolution of this flow field much as we can with the exposure effect object voxels we have cells in the flow field so the same idea it's divided up into these cells and the, the smaller the cell is obviously the higher resolution so if you have a much finer uh, much more complicated spline you might want to reduce that to have it follow a little more accurately but this is going to give us a really nice flow now if i just hit play now and you'll see it has some impact. There is some motion uh, towards the spline, but obviously buoyancy and everything else is overpowering it. And what we can see here is we have a strength slider, and this is how much of uh, the velocity the fluid is going to respect. And as you see, as I increase that, it starts to move towards our spline and follow along it much, much, much tighter. Okay, so sometimes the fluid will hop from one part to the next. So if I actually make our spline a little tighter around this part and we reduce the strength somewhat, our fluid will actually, the buoyancy will come in and actually take over and make it jump over to the next part of the spline. Now, of course, we can turn off all the buoyancy. We can turn off all the other velocity inputs. And let's do that now to just demonstrate something. Let's go to the simulation tab. Let's drop our buoyancy off. We can actually, we'll leave vorticity on. Go to our... A source tag and we're going to turn off curl that's adding some artificial velocity uh, we'll leave pressure on for now and we'll hit play now all of a sudden you'll see that our, our motion along the spline is much much slower and that's because it was actually using the buoyancy force particularly the buoyancy force and all of our other velocities to move it along the spline now we only have pressure and a few um, expansion properties that are giving us velocities and then we are simply redirecting that fluid with the flow field. So let's go back to the flow field. The field mode is direction. Let's change it to velocity. And you'll see now we are driving the simulation's velocity. We are actually imparting a speed of 150 units, which is quite fast here. And you can see it's really pushing our simulation around. So this is very, very art directable fluids. You still get the lovely fluid motion, but we can combine those and have different effects. Now I could add another a layer to this. I could add a, let's go for a another turbulence layer. And you can see I can break that up. I mean, oh, at the moment they're not blending. That's just turbulence occurring. So I can blend these two layers together by going down to the blend and I'll go to add. And then I just want to add a small amount of this turbulence and that'll actually break up our, let's go a bit more, drop the scale down or increase the scale actually to give us a bit more of a fine look. And there we go. So like I said, the flow field is a really good one because we can modify our velocities. We can modify our voxels inside our exposure effects simulation using those and layer them up and combine them for all sorts of cool different effects.
Okay, so really that is the modifiers for exposure effects. Let's take a look at the deformers. So I'm gonna deactivate this system. I'm also gonna deactivate this particular tag so it doesn't interact with our other system over here. Let's hide the modifiers. Let's display our deformers. Let's turn those on as well. And let's just take a look at the first few things in here. So we have an explosion effects object, much like before in the other system. Uh, it's a much longer container, as you can see. And then we have this sphere primitive and an exposure effects source tag. I'm gonna enable that and I'm gonna hit play and let's see what we've got. So you can see it's animating, it's moving through our exposure effects volume, our exposure effects container and generating this nice looking simulation. Now, this is of course called deformers. And deformers, we're talking about the Cinema 4D deformers here. And I'm gonna add a bend deformer. So I'm gonna put it in underneath our exposure effects uh, container here. And it works much like you would work with geometry. So I'm gonna add a bend in here. I'm gonna make it 80 by 80 by 80. I'm just gonna rotate it on 90 degrees like so. And all I need to do is make it a child or a sibling of our exposure effects object. Hit play. And all of a sudden, our simulation is deforming and it's actually going outside of our simulation bounds. Now, if we turn adaptive bounds display on on this, you'll actually see what's going on. So if I go back to zero, press play again, you'll see the bounds will adapt for this newly deformed simulation. So what, what's happening is, is as they enter this deformer, the voxels within that deformer are then deformed just as they would be polygons or points or geometry, stuff like that. And then they, they are bent and outside and including the velocities and the direction of those voxels as well. And that results in this redirection. Um, we're going quite far down here. So let's uh, redirect it again. Uh, we can combine them just like we can with um, other uh, modifiers and deformers. So I'm just going to rotate that one over like so. Rotate it down and let's just make sure it captures it like so. So with two of these acting one after the other, we should be able to redirect our fluid back up, uh, back up to a long line like so. So you can see the adaptive bounds is allowed to leave the main bounds. It's allowed to go outside of the bounds when we have deformers like this. So this is really cool and really powerful also, just like modifying. It's slightly different to modifying because it's, it's actually transforming where the voxels are. Now I'm going to add a twist to this. Let's do, let's do a decent amount of twisting. Let's do a much smaller sized twist. Now I have to remember which side is the input for this. Yep, that was a guess. Let's have a look. Yep, there we go. It's it is twisting, but it obviously it's twisting at the center of an axis. If we moved it down, it would cause a more interesting looking twist. Let's do a double as well, like so. So you can see I can move it around live whilst this is playing back. If I have it paused, it's not going to work because it's not being solved. So we just need to do that. And you can see we can deform our fluid live. And this is excellent if we want to make corrections to our fluid. Uh, obviously, this is quite a dramatic example here. We could actually have it following through some pipe work, perhaps. Uh, but really, uh, another powerful feature of this deforming is that say you've got a fluid going out of an area that you want it to in your simulation, you can just tweak it a little bit with a deformer, just as you would with some geometry. Okay, so I'm going to turn those off. In fact, I'm going to get rid of those completely. And you'll see our adaptive bounds actually jumps back to the main bounds and it actually squashes what was in there already. But that's obviously fine. And we're going to add a, a spline wrap. And if you look down in our utilities null here, I've actually got a hidden one called splines. This is just a visual representation. I'm gonna drop our spline wrap inside here and you'll see it adapts to the whole container. And what I might do is, uh, is I'm gonna drop in the spline here, the animated helix spline, like so. And let's actually view, first of all, let's turn off our exposure effects object and see what's gonna happen here. So the, the Simulation is going to be uh, spline wrapped onto this spline here, this this shape that's actually adapting. It's actually animating. So as you can see, the animating helix is going to shrink from that to that. So let's see if that works. And let's see, press play. 
and you'll see it's being deformed along our uh, helix spline. And of course, remember, we're not deforming the, the bounds here. The bounds themselves are not deforming. So the voxels are still in that uh, world X, Y, Z alignment. And that's why the adaptive bounds has to change its shape as the spline deforms. So it has to adapt to allow this deformation to occur. In fact, I can turn the sweep off so we can see the simulation only. And there we go. So it's similar to how we were doing earlier with the the modifier, except this time it's it's deforming it. It's absolutely changing the position of where that simulated voxel would have occurred. Okay, so that is modifiers and deformers in Explosure Effects. Incredibly powerful way of art directing your simulations. And of course, combining that all with things like particles will really help to sell your effects.